Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for that introduction. I am so thrilled to be here with you in Madrid today. My mom and I have had the chance to explore your beautiful city the past few days, and we have absolutely fallen in love with it. So thank you to Unleash and Trivu for having me. I'm really excited to be here to share my story with you a bit today. It begins when I was 12 years old, and I built and programmed a robot for the very first time. At 13, I learned through my Ethiopian pen pal that over one third of our global population is currently living in energy poverty, with limited access to things like lights, medical supplies, and clean drinking water. And I decided to do something about that problem. When I was 15, I presented my solution to energy poverty to the President of the United States, Barack Obama, at the White House. When I was 17, my life changed when my dad was given a 30% chance to live. At 18, I decided I wanted to do something about it. Again, thank you so much for having me, and this is a reminder that throughout the presentation, you can ask questions through the app, and we'll answer them at the end. So my parents began to teach me from a very young age the importance of being compassionate. They also taught me the importance of valuing my education, and I always worked hard to obtain high grades in school. Despite keeping my grades high, I wasn't allowed to be in the advanced math class as a child, simply because I didn't score high enough on an aptitude test. This denial led me to believe, at the age of just 10 years old, that I wasn't smart enough to do math or science. Despite this failure, the arts were very central to my childhood. Every summer, my brother and I would look forward to going to theater camp, where we had the freedom to express ourselves, be creative, and take on different characters to try to explore our creativity. So you can imagine my disappointment, confusion, and utter fear when my dad sat me down the day before engineering camp and told me, Hannah, sorry, you're not going to theater camp this summer. As I said, you're going to engineering camp. I was terrified because I had no idea what engineering was. When I learned that it had, um, had things to do with math and science, of course I was terrified because I had already come to believe that I wasn't smart enough to do these subjects. Despite my apprehension, I walked into camp that first day and I looked around the room slowly, realizing that I was the only girl in the entire program. Of course, at that point, I looked at my dad and said, we're going home, right? I don't have to stay here with all of these boys. He told me words that I'll never forget and undoubtedly I'll use on my own children one day. Just try this for today. If you don't like it, you don't enjoy yourself, you don't have to come back tomorrow. So I said, okay, I guess that's fair enough. And in the camp, we were separated into teams. This is my team of two boys who I still build robots with today. And the challenge that we were given was to create a small robot to knock the opposing team's robot off of this raised platform. The competition is called Sumo Bots. Whoever would knock the most robots off of the platform won the competition at the end of the camp. It seemed pretty simple, until we sat down at the computer to program, and I had no idea what I was doing. The two boys on my team told me things that changed my life in that moment. Instead of telling me to sit to the side and not worry about building the robot, because I had no idea what to do, they said, Hannah, we're going to show you how to program, we're going to show you how to build, and we want you to do this too. It's safe to say this week changed my life. At the end of the week, we won the whole competition, and I've been building robots with boys ever since. <laughs> When I got back to school that fall, I made a point to learn everything I could about science by joining all of the engineering clubs I could find, such as Science Olympiad, Underwater Robotics, and even more sumo bot competitions. I learned a lot of things and built a lot of smaller robots at home, such as this one. So this is touch sensor, and when he hits that wall, he's going to stop. Of course, when I was 13, I thought, wow, I'm really breaking the boundaries of science here, right? This is so cool. But now that I'm 19, I know six- and seven-year-olds who build robots more advanced than this. The point of me showing you this video is that everyone starts somewhere. You don't have to be an expert in your field from day one. Don't be afraid to be bad at something, because that takes more bravery than success ever could. My science teacher at the time, Ms. Suzette Malou, always encouraged my classmates and I to look around to find problems that we could solve using the skills that we learned in school. So when a problem came in the mail, it was almost natural for me to want to try to solve it. My pen pal Ruth, who lives in Ethiopia, and I had been in contact for about four years when I received this letter. 
talking about how she was living in energy poverty with limited access to electricity. Living in America, I have water and food and medical supplies at my fingertips every day, and it broke my heart to know that my friend was living in this situation. Even though my engineering knowledge was very, very limited, I wanted to do something about it. So I began designing a prototype, which I call Beacon, or bringing electricity access to countries through ocean energy. This is inspired by my home, which is Florida, surrounded by water on three sides. One day I was with my family, and I saw the true power of ocean currents when a huge boat was swept sideways by moving water. I wondered, how can I harness this water power and convert it into a usable source of electricity? I began this project with very complicated designs that, frankly, did not work very well. I had to test them in huge life jackets that were probably making me drown, <laughs> and I had to build these prototypes out of leftover parts from robotic season. You can see that's a big bucket with a bunch of random parts, and it broke about five minutes after taking this picture, to my disappointment. The point of me showing you these pictures is that it's okay to fail, but what's even more okay is reaching out for help from mentors. I remember one of my mentors sat me down and said, Hannah, these prototypes aren't going very well. Do you want some help? And I said yes, and I learned so much and eventually came up with a prototype that works very well. It generates electricity through the movement of water, and as the generator is spun, it illuminates lights, which is electricity that can charge batteries. Now, building Beacon was amazing, and it allowed my science teacher to encourage me to share my idea by entering competitions such as the Discovery, Education, and 3M Young Scientist Challenge. Throughout the experience of the Young Scientist Challenge, I was paired with a mentor, Mr. Jeff M. Slander, from 3M Manufacturing Company, who taught me many lessons, one of the most important of which is that oftentimes, the best solutions are the simplest ones. It doesn't have to be overcomplicated and crazy in order to work well. It can be as simple as wheels spinning a generator to generate electricity. At the end of the Young Scientist Challenge, I was thrilled to be awarded with the title of America's 2015 Top Young Scientist, which led to many incredible opportunities, such as speaking to President Obama at the White House. But what was even more fun than that was talking to kids about why science is important. But not only science, anything that kids are passionate about. You can't be afraid to go after your goals and pursue them with all that you have, even if you feel like you're going to fail at first. All of these successes came to a screeching halt in 2017 when my dad was diagnosed with late-stage cancer. It completely broke my heart to watch the surgeon share this news with my mom in the hospital hallway. I didn't understand why this was happening, and frankly, I didn't really want to do science anymore. My dad had a surgical site infection, or an SSI, after, this hospital, after the surgery occurred, which prolonged his time in the hospital, increased his pain, and increased my family's medical expenses. At this time, I thought, well, I probably can't do much to tackle cancer research, but the issues of infection are very much probable for me to solve. I was at the time working in the Florida Atlantic Biomechanics Laboratory, or the Fab Lab, which is a marine lab studying the different properties of fish. I was studying the properties of shark skin, which has a unique micro-pattern on it, meaning that it's antibacterial, so it can keep underwater bacteria from settling on the surface. I wondered how I could, in theory, pull this pattern out of the water, without harming any sharks, in order to pull these antibacterial properties and apply them to a medical facility. Now, as I mentioned, at this time, I wasn't really doing much. I had this great idea, but I wasn't interested in going back to lab. All I wanted to do was spend time with my family and my dad. This is what a mentor said to me. The worst thing you can do is see a problem you can solve and do nothing about it. It was like a light bulb went off in my mind in this moment, and I wondered, maybe I do need to go back to lab and try to solve this problem that impacts over 200 million people every year. So I took the idea of using shark skin as an antibacterial bandage, and after seven months of research and development, I brought it to life in the form of this bandage. These are two microscope images. One is of real shark skin, and the other is of my bandage, which is pretty similar. But even cooler than that is that the bandage has antibacterial properties and can keep about 95% of deadly hospital bacteria off of the surface, which is really cool and hasn't been done before without antibiotics or chemicals added. My teacher again encouraged me to share my idea with the world by competing in science fairs. The Intel International Science and Engineering Fair is one of the largest pre-college science and engineering fairs in the world. 
There's representatives from all over the world, which is the best part. You get to meet students from the US, from Spain, from India, all over the world. At the end of the ICE International Science Fair, I was awarded with first place and best in my category this year, and it was simply incredible. Now, sharing this moment with my family, and especially my dad, is something that I know I will never forget. There are three main lessons that I can summarize this into that perhaps you may find helpful in your journey and your career. The first is to ask questions. We all have that childlike curiosity somewhere deep inside us where we want to know how everything works, and we simply want to voice our questions to the mentors around us. Having the bravery to ask these questions, no matter how dumb they may sound, is what makes a great scientist and a great leader overall. So I encourage you to have the bravery to ask. The second point that I've learned is to embrace failure. This may seem obvious, but failures often lead to successes. In fact, there have been many times where I failed for weeks and weeks and weeks, up until one point where I finally reached a success. I could have quit, but you have to learn to keep going. This is a hard lesson, but it's definitely helped me, and I know it'll serve me well in the future. The third and final lesson is to lean on other people, both the mentors in front of you, as well as the peers and the friends around you. These are some of my closest friends, girls who are also in science, but also lead normal, dramatic lives just like me. They're working on tackling some of society's greatest challenges, such as cleaning and purifying water for people to drink in underdeveloped nations, preventing breast cancer radiation damage, helping to spread policy, just all kinds of incredible things that are absolutely changing our world. Having a network of people in whatever unique field you may be in can serve you so, so well. I can't tell you the number of times I've been so frustrated that my idea wasn't working that I called one of them at three in the morning and said, I want to quit, and they encouraged me to keep going. I'm sure many of you have experienced this as well. At the end, I think back to the beginning of my journey, building overcomplicated, not very functional ocean energy collection devices out of leftover parts from robotic season all because of a problem that impacted my friend's ability to get an education and to drink clean water. To all of you, I want to encourage you not to be afraid to tackle the big problems in your life and in the lives of those around you, because the solutions to those problems can be found in some very unusual places, such as a moving body of water or the sharks that swim in it. Don't be afraid to be different, even if you are the only girl in the room. Thank you. Well, thank you all so much. There are a few questions that we can answer now. So, um, do you think that being a woman has been a handicap on your career development? No, I definitely don't think so. I know many people have this experience of gender inequality and all of this, but for me, in my experience, everyone I've worked with has been extremely kind. I showed you the picture of the boys and I in those green jump shoots, jump, jumpsuits. Excuse me. Those are some of my best friends, and they encourage me, and they definitely listen to my ideas, which has been so helpful to me. What would you say is the best advice you have received? Um, that quote I put up there, which is, the worst thing you can do is see a problem you can solve and do nothing about it. You have to just go after problems and solving them without fear, even if you don't want to do anything. You know, I took a few months off at that point because I was so discouraged, but that quote definitely changed my life, so that's my favorite quote. Um, do you think poor results in traditional schools' exams affect your confidence and your chances to try new things? Yes, definitely. I had this experience um, when I was a child, and I scored badly on a test, and I wasn't encouraged to pursue math or science. And up until middle school, when my parents said, Hannah, you can do it, you can do anything you want to do, I didn't have the confidence to go after that. So I definitely encourage you, if you're a mentor, if you have kids in your life who maybe have had a similar experience, just tell them that they can do whatever they want. It doesn't have to be science. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Just encourage them to try everything. Um, is Beacon already installed anywhere? No, Beacon is not installed anywhere. Currently, I plan in the future to open source the design so that people can create it and build it anywhere, especially for people in underdeveloped countries, such as my friend Ruth. Okay, well, thank you all so much. I really appreciate your time.